So is infidelity research and clinical literature really kind of antiquated and basically useless and mostly for just speculation and kind of entertainment, or is there really some value to it? This is a great question. So no, our literature and our uh, clinical research is not antiquated and it has tons of value. It's how we actually prove that what we think we know is true. So first, let me address this idea of our research on infidelity being antiquated. Researchers, many of whom are also practicing clinicians, are constantly doing infidelity research. And let me show you how many studies are ongoing now and where you can read these studies. So stand by. So take yourself over to Google Scholar. To get there, just go to Google or any search engine you like and type in Google Scholar. Once you get there, you'll see a page that looks something like this, where you can type in a search term that you're interested in. I put in infidelity and I set the time frame to uh, publications since 2023. When I did that and, you know, pressed enter, I got dozens and dozens and dozens of reports. Um, actually, about five pages of results came up. So. If you wanna see how many studies are ongoing and what research has been published in the last couple of years, you can go there and you can read it. It's completely free and available to you. Now, not all of the studies when you put in infidelity are related to our kind of infidelity, but the majority of them are. Let me show you another one. So I'm just showing you a snapshot here that there are dozens of articles that you can go and read all about infidelity and you can learn more about the latest research that's happening. You can even set up an alert when you're on Google Scholar to get the latest publications um, sent directly to your um, email inbox. So um, a lot of these publications, you have to pay for the article, but you can usually read the abstract for free. So if you're curious about what's going on in infidelity research and how much of it is you know, recent, just sign up for an alert and you will pretty much at least once a week get an article or a link to a new article that you can buy if you want to about the research that's going on in the world of infidelity. So that addresses the idea that, you know, our research is not antiquated. Now, is the re research useful? Is it valuable? Totally, totally. Otherwise, it's just everybody with conjecture and their own ideas and their own hypotheses, right? So anyone can make a theory about infidelity and put it out there and say, hey, here's my latest, greatest idea about infidelity. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Kind of debunked by literature. Equally, my own theory, right? The whole reason I wanted to do the research study that we undertook last year and we're hoping to have published this year is because I wanted to validate my affair Bermuda Triangle theory. And um, I, you know, if you're curious about that theory, just search for it and you'll find me talking about that. I had seen this in my clinical practice over the last 25 years. And if you would have asked me, how many people do I think fall under the affair Bermuda Triangle conditions? I would have said it's probably 85 to 90%. In reality, when we asked people, it was closer to 50%. So I was wrong, right? It wasn't. 85 or 90%. But it also gave me the opportunity to ask more questions and learn more. What I realized from doing our research is that when you ask people explicitly about the Avera Bermuda Triangle, only about 50% will say, yeah, that was me. But when you break it down into the components, many more people endorse that theory. So there's more work I need to do to kind of refine the theory and see how I can make it um, more accurate for the masses. So this is the whole point. We need to take our best ideas that always do come from practice, and then we need to ask people about it. We need to talk to them, we need to talk to their partners, we need to talk to therapists, and we need to keep reworking what we believe is happening so we can come up with treatment recommendations for people so that when a new clinician goes into the field, and they wanna start working with somebody and helping them recover from an affair, that they are armed with the best knowledge and the tested ideas about how to help these people heal rather than a bunch of guesses and ideas and hunches. So the purpose of the research is to inform treatment. It's not just to, you know, come up with cute sounding theories and, you know, little names for things. It's really, really to guide clinicians. All right, hope that helps.